welcome to the Reykjavik Grapevine newscast. I'm here with Brian Pilkington, who's um, a children's illustrator and writer. What is it that attracts you to um, Christmas and Icelandic Christmas stories in particular? And so, sort of, where did your journey with these Christmas characters like the Yule Cat start? Well, it, it started uh, when I first came to Iceland. I, I was obviously very aware of what was going on at Christmas time. Mm. And I realised nobody else was doing anything with them. So I just figured it was somebody had to uh, sit down and. Um, uh, start doing some drawings and, and write write books about them, and uh, you know nobody they weren't doing it. You know, they, uh, then it came to me that I had to apply myself to it. Yeah. And I'm uh, I'm just about to start doing a drawing of the Yule Cat now. I'll I'll, uh, I'll continue the interview while whilst we're talking. <laughs> Is there something in particular that you like about the Icelandic Christmas traditions? in comparison to, you know, more stereotypical things like Santa Claus? Uh, the, uh, obviously, the, 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 um, the, 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 the characters, the 13 Icelandic Yule Lads, are infinitely more exciting than the, than the, uh, the, the Yule Father Christmas, the mm, Santa. Definitely. He, they're not quite as nice as he is, but, uh, you know, they're not hideously awful. At the same time, they're they're they're, they're quite uh, accessible, and um, yeah. So yeah, thirteen sort of mischievous uh, lads who, who go around um, delivering presents to to the children thirteen different days of the year, or rather thirteen days before preceding Christmas, and. Uh, they leave a li little something in the shoe, and it, whereas in England you'd leave it in a sock, so it's something about footwear and yeah. Christmas that you know sort of go together. But um, uh, I'm not sure why that is. But uh, yeah, the 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 much more fun to draw than say endless pictures of Santa who is a jolly smiley you can do them scowling and you can you can do expressions and you can give them in sort of tatty old clothes and it's it's a lot more fun i think to do yeah. than english english or american uh, centers um and then when you start creating visually creating a character like the yule cat who's obviously been written about and spoken about elsewhere but you're putting it, your own twist on it how do you yeah. go about creating it visually? Um, like, where do the ideas come from? The the idea for the 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 the, la the, the book about the Yule Cat uh, came to me on a flight to England, going over for Christmas, and I thought I hate sitting in planes, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought I'd always take a, a paper and pencil and and sort of jot down ideas. And uh, I've got a little book with all the, the original sort of ideas, and then the 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 thought of doing um, a Christmas makeover, just getting him ready for Christmas, making him less smelly <laughs> and a bit more appealing, uh, it was uh, the, the the original idea, and then it sort of kind of developed from there, mm. and. Uh, it, 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 uh, once I decided I was going to do a book about the cat, I applied myself to doing loads and loads and loads of drawings of cats to, to, to get the one I felt comfortable with. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it sort of um, it developed sort of naturally without too much effort. And it's been it's been a it was a dream of a book, and I'd love to kind of come up with an idea for a second book because uh, I think the, the, the first one was quite popular, and it, it would warrant a second book or even a third. Yeah. But I, I, I haven't developed the, an idea well enough yet. 
Yeah, I was going to ask if you were planning on using the Yule Cat again. I'd love to. You know, I, I, I'm sort of waiting for inspiration. Mm. And uh, hopefully one day it'll ping and, <laughs> and I'll, I'll have a new book. Yeah. But um, until that day comes, then... Uh, it's a, it's a strange thing, you know, where do I, ideas come from, you know, it's, it's, it, uh, I don't think anybody has the answer. No. But um, they, they just arrive and uh, I think if you're forced into a situation where you have to sit and think, like instead of like trying to come up with an idea at home, go and sit in a library or something, go on an aeroplane somewhere, <laughs> I think that's always a, a, a nice way to do it. Yeah. Do you find um, when, because you obviously paint it right as well, do those complement each other quite well? I mean, I kind of imagine if you're stuck with writing, you can do paint, do the illustrations for a bit. Yeah, it's a really good question. And yeah, that the, helps the, your the, ideas. It, the, it's a, the, if you're writing with, if you're illustrating for another author, then then um, they they they're very sort of strict with the, what you can do with it, you know, mm. and, and the, the, they they you're restricted. But if you you have absolute uh, freedom, if you're um, you're uh, il, il, if you're the writer and the illustrator. Yeah. But uh, so so it, like it's obviously ideal to to illustrate your own books and and then you can draw whatever you want yeah. and then you choose a subject that and you know to draw the you can is is like sort of um, is a wonderful idea because <laughs> he's a, such a pleasant character. You can you can alter the story uh, to suit the illustration. You, you decide what you want to work, what you want to illustrate, and how you want it set up, and then you. You, you, you're probably saying an awful lot with the illustration that you don't need to put in the text. Yeah. And I think that's 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 the beauty of, of it. You know, you can do anything you want, really. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, am I right in thinking that you started out illustrating other people's stories and then started writing your own? Yeah, I think the first. Uh, the very first book was, was uh, offered to me and it was a book about a troll. And uh, uh, I snapped at it, you know. I thought that this was a great. That was that was what gave me the chance to go freelance because it was like sort of three, four months' work. Mm. So it gave me the opportunity to get a little office and go freelance. And uh, 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 that set me up. And then uh, it, was, it was. It's 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 ideal, you know, to be to. Do the text and and the and the and the illustrations yourself. Yeah, it's it's perfect. Makes sense. Um, yeah. So I was thinking. I suppose when you're writing something for children, that sort of requires recalling what it was like to be a child. It's quite a sort of nostalgic thing to do in a way. And I wonder if that is also one of the appeals of the um, folklore that obviously inspires you because these are stories that have been told over and over again throughout the ages. Yeah, they're kind of ready formed characters, you know, they, they, they you know, nobody, they, they had been drawn back in the 1930s, mm. but there was a, a, a big element of having to recreate these, or create these people for the first time. Yeah. And I spent I spent a long time doing de developing the the uh, Christmas men, the Yule lads, and uh, very little time when, on the first book developing the cat because I wasn't quite sure how he looked at the time. But when I eventually came to do a book about him, I re reassessed him and did it uh, slightly different. Mm. Uh, we just just gave him more sort of colour because he was pretty black in the first book, and I figured that wasn't going to be fun enough to draw, so I, I lightened him up and made him more of a tabby cat. And uh, so you know, we have a, at the moment a, a new a new cat that. Show to the cameras. <laughs> it arrived this Christmas, and uh, it's um, beautifully done, but really nicely constructed. It's and, lovely. And uh, um, ready for sale. Ready to in, all in the shops already. <laughs> and 
had anyone sort of done these illustrations of the traditional Icelandic stories before you? There was, the, the, back in, the, the, the man who, who developed them, back in 1934 or something, he, okay. he did a little book with the illustrations by somebody else, and they're in black and white and tiny little drawings. And he sort of uh, narrowed the Yule Lads down to 13. And he, he was like the sort of the, 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 the original founder of the, the, the Yule Lads. Mm. Uh, but you know, since that book, you know, there's not, or virtually nothing had been done. Yeah. So um, it, 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 and not, nothing in colour, and, and you know, as I say, that the, the heads were less than the size of your, your your fingernail. They were little black and white, and, and yeah, quite charmingly done, but uh, not, in my opinion, um, suitable for for uh, developing. And uh, I, I sort of took it upon myself to to, um, to uh, do it slightly differently, mm. or you know, completely reinvent them. To tell you the truth, yeah. <laughs> and the the the, the Yule Cat, uh, when I came to do the book about on the Yule Cat, was based on on um, on me. You know, it's a self portrait because I'm grumpy and uh, I'm, I'm vicious and <laughs> no, I'm not vicious. <laughs> But uh, he's got a beard, a moustache, and, and a goatee like mine, and uh, he's basically sort of the same persona, similar persona <laughs> to me. Um, have you ever sort of illustrated or written about characters that are totally your own invention? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I think one of the first books I did was another Christmas book, which was called Grandfather Christmas, mm -hmm. which is about an old man who um, uh, who had a, a really long white beard and was employed as a Yule, uh, as a Christmas, as a Father Christmas in a, in a local store, in a grotto. And uh, it, was, it was about you know, how he survived the rest of the year, you know, with this big long beard getting in the way and things. And, and that was very, it sold in like sort of, 16 countries in the first year mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's very successful so i did like then a trilogy uh another two books and uh they they were re re really quite successful so i've created and then there, there was a book after that called norman's ark which was um uh done uh you know, I created the character and, 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 and the story, and it was about a man building an ark. And... But uh, the, the, he had a, a dream that it was raining quite, uh, it would cr rain a lot, and, and uh, it sort of frightened him. And he thought he'd, uh, he'd been collecting wood for years, you know, something which I do. I thought they're all me, <laughs> it's, all, it's all about me. And, uh, he figured, well, you know, he's, he needed a project, so he, he would um, uh, uh, build an ark. And then when, when he when he uh, uh, when it was finished, he realised that he'd need animals, so he sort of got the put the word around or advertised that you know he, he wanted animals for his ark, and lots of kids were, were coming and swapping them for little toys that he'd made and things, and. Uh, the, so he got hamsters and all, all these pets and cat, cats and dogs and all, all, all kinds of things. And uh, he eventually opens it, he takes the, the ark and moves it down to a spot in the high street, which is Lugavega in Reykjavik. And uh, he opens a pet shop. <laughs> and the, you know, again, that's sold in lots of countries. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it went well. Okay, concentrate a little bit on, the, on this thing, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you can ask me questions, of course. Yes. Uh, so obviously, um, with the sort of traditional story of the Yule cat, he's a man-eating cat, and um, you, you, know, you don't use that in your story, presumably, because... 
That's no. quite scary. In but... my <laughs> in my story, he's, he's become too old and and too too slow to to hunt children. Yeah. He doesn't eat, <laughs> he doesn't eat men so much as as he would eat uh, small children mm. who don't get uh, new clothes for Christmas. The poor kids got no no say on what they get for Christmas presents. But you know, if they don't get any cr- new cro- clothes, they uh, they they're eaten by the Yule cat. Mm. Which is, seems awfully unfair, <laughs> but uh, I think that you know the the way this had started was back in the in the nineteenth this eighteenth and nineteenth century, when the the Icelanders were extraordinarily poor. There were very few sort of uh, 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 Debenhams. <laughs> there were no yeah. shops and things, so so they had to make all their own clothes. And the kids were put in, in, in uh, 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 to work, you know, sort of work in the looms and, and spin in the wool and things. And I think to keep them working, then they they, um, they would tell them stories about the Yule cat, you know, coming to get them if they don't if they don't keep busy and do do the work they were given. Mm. And I guess that's that, that's the way it worked. But you know, I'm, that's only my uh, idea. Okay. But uh, I think it's probably sort of fairly fairly. Uh, a good idea. So they're sort of quite anti-Christmas stories, and they're they're quite they're, really, they're sort of scary. And I mean, obviously, you make it much less scary well, in your yeah. thing. But do you think there's something attractive about how? I mean, it's definitely none of it's kitsch or or too jolly. It's no, right, yeah, these yeah. Like it's, Scrooge-like it's kind of, it characters. Seems, it seems to me nicely balanced. You know, it's not yeah. not, not too. Uh, to sweet and and, uh, and uh, saccharine. Yeah. It, it, it becomes uh, more realistic, really, and, and you, you know the characters are more fun because they because the, because of that. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, you, you know, I've done sort of three or four books about the the Ulets. And with stories, there's one about Stuva and one about uh, Grilla, and uh, you can sort of slowly develop the characters a bit more and, and to make them into something a bit uh, more rounded. Mm. And uh, I'm just going to give it and give the, the cat the eyeball. So. I'm going to concentrate a second. Okay. Finishing touches. Well. I'll put my handprints all over the paper. There you go. That's uh, sort of not finished, but it's getting closer. <laughs> yeah. But the thing with uh, working as an illustrator is you, you follow your successes. You, you, if something fails, you don't go down that road again. Mm. But the, the first book sold extraordinarily well and did well, and it's been sold to tourists for years and years. And the, se- the second, so it, it, it sort of warrants the second one. And then, uh, and then you know, if that goes well, then you, you, you do another one. So, you know, like, a, and, a, and it, I really enjoy working with the Ulands and doing the Christmas stuff. And quite often, my whole year is doing like Christmas stuff. You know, mm. like doing I'm doing sort of uh, tea towels of the Yule lads and, and for tourists, and doing all kinds of uh, throw-offs, like sort of um, the, the models that we, I showed you before, uh, hugely successful, successful, and, and uh, go rather well. Do you have a particular project you're working on at the moment? Well, since uh, I was 70 last year, or this year rather, and uh, you know, the, with lockdown uh, coming, I, I'd sort of set myself the idea of working on a, on a book about um, the first settlers in, uh, and uh, sort of explaining, you know, how they lived and how they subsisted and and what they did to to uh, how, how they survived, you know, how they because it's uh, you, you know you've experienced it's like minus six today, mm. and 
uh, it, it can be really harsh the winters and, and to, to be in tiny little sort of mud huts basically uh, living the winter uh, going through through the winter it uh, must have been really really extremely harsh and I, st I started working on that and sort of did a few illustrations and a few jotted down some ideas but then I, I fancied doing some uh, paintings mm. sort of landscape I've always painted landscape as a hobby and I thought, you know, maybe I should, you know, just try and develop it a bit more. And uh, I've been doing loads and loads of uh, uh, landscapes over the summer for my own pleasure. And uh, maybe one day have a, an exhibition. In well, in the near future, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, if all the galleries open again soon. <laughs> Yeah, I think apparently people have said, say that people have told me that you know the galleries are doing really quite well. You know they they, they haven't closed uh, well perhaps the last couple of weeks, but they, they they were open for a long time, and then people were laying out money for uh, paintings. You know people were buying paintings, mm. which is a uh, nice encouraging. So maybe it's something I should do soon, but. Um, yeah, that, that that is close to my heart, you know, do, doing the sort of abstract abstract landscapes there. I tell you what, I'll do a little swirl for a shadow, and then we'll call it done. Cool. <laughs> it sits on the page well. There you go. Um, thank you for watching and um, please like and subscribe and join the High Five Club.